Hello and welcome to Dad Gives Advice. My name is Orestes and uh, the reason I'm launching this series of videos is to put out some information that I wish I had when I was younger. I've learned a lot of things over the last few decades. There's quite a few of them that I wish I'd known back when I was starting my career or even back all the way to high school. And there's just certain things that just don't teach you. And there, there's just no class for basic finances, typically budgeting, things like how do you establish credit? How should you invest? What should you invest in? And other things that are not even related to finance, like, you know, what kind of education should I seek? Should I go to college or not? And if I do go to college, what kind of a major should I go after? Lots of different things, even cognitive biases. I want to do a video or two on that so that I can help folks understand that human beings, our brains are wired certain ways and wired to react to certain things. And we need to really know that so we can look out for those things so that we can think about situations and, and new information and new ideas that are presented to us so that we can navigate that a lot more smartly than we would had we not known that information. Now, in this first video, I'm just doing a quick introduction. I'm doing something very basic. I'm just going to talk about what happens when you get your first paycheck. What, what does a paycheck look like? And kind of break down some of the things that come out of your paycheck and, and why. And then I also cover a little bit about budgets and, and why it's important to have a budget. So let's talk about that. So let's first talk about your first paycheck. If you haven't uh, yet gotten a paycheck, this will be useful information. If you've already had one, maybe you'll learn a couple of things about some of the things that are in there and why they're in there. So let's say you get a job and your salary is $50,000 a year. Now that salary, the, that number doesn't really matter. Some of you may get a higher paying job than that. Good for you. Others will start lower. It doesn't really matter. It's, this is just for the sake of discussion. This is called your gross pay. And it it is important to differentiate that from your take home pay or your net pay because there are deductions. There are things that are going to come out of every paycheck that you're going to be paying for as far as benefits or they're going to be taxes. So let's look at a few of those. So you might have some benefits that you pay for when you have this job. Some of them are things like uh, health insurance. Okay. In the US, health insurance is of course, usually covered by private health insurance, and that is usually done through your work. This health insurance, you're going to pay for it, part of it, and your employer is going to pay for part of it, every paycheck. You're not going to see the portion that your employer pays until maybe they give you a report at the end of the year that tells you, oh, by the way, you know, we paid $10,000 or $15,000 for your insurance this year. And a lot of times you pay you know, maybe $80, $90 per paycheck maybe less, depending on how young and healthy you are and what kind of insurance you pick. And your employer might actually pay more for that health insurance on your behalf. So that's something to know. There's also potentially you might be paying for life insurance. You might buy that through your work. It might be cheaper to buy life insurance for yourself or a spouse through your worst benefit plan versus going out and doing it yourself through an insurance company. Sometimes it's the other way around. So you might want to shop around if you want to do that, if you do want to buy life insurance. I'll cover life insurance in a future video, by the way, but in, in, for the sake of this one, what we're talking about potentially paying for life insurance through your paycheck. And another one might be your 401k deduction. Your 401k deduction is important because that's how you save for retirement. And we'll talk again more in more detail on that one in a future video, but just pointing it out here that there may be that kind of benefit that your workplace provides. And you, you will definitely want to take advantage of that. But again, we'll talk about that in a future video. There's other things that you might be paying for benefit wise through your paycheck, but let's just leave it at that for now. The other big category is of course, taxes. Taxes to pay for you know, civilization, basically. It suffices to say for this video that we're going to agree that taxes are important and we need to pay for them. I might cover that taxes topic in general in a future video. The main different kinds of taxes that you might pay or that you will be paying would, would be your federal income tax. And the federal income tax deduction that comes out of your paycheck will depend on how many people you have as, as dependents is what, what is that called? So for example, I might have three dependents because I have a wife and two kids. And you starting out at a young age might have no dependents because you're single. 
So if you have more dependents, you'll actually have less tax to pay every every paycheck and vice versa. If you have fewer dependents, you'll have more tax to pay every paycheck as a percentage of your paycheck. So federal income tax will vary in that way. For somebody in the $50,000 a year range, you're probably going to pay somewhere in between 20 and 25% taxes, but that might change depending on who's in charge in, in Washington and which laws are being passed regarding your um, overall taxes. Then another important tax is called the, you'll see it on your paycheck, possibly as OASDI. This is also called the social security tax. And this is 6.2% of your check. And this is an important deduction because what's happening here is that the government is saying, we're going to take 6.2% of your paycheck and put it into a fund that we're going to save for you for retirement. Now, this was a huge thing that the U.S. government did in the early 20th century because prior to having that, lots of folks would go you know, live their life working a job which paid not that much and they might have you know, be, be paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth kind of existence. And then when they got to retirement age and they couldn't work anymore, they had no money to live on and now they were a burden on society or they had to rely on relatives to help get by or they might ha- end up in poor houses, what they used to call them. So the government decided, you know, let's not, let's not do that. Let's have at least a fund that we pay into as we're working so that when we retire, the government will pay us retirement check essentially every month. Now that the number, the value of that retirement amount will depend on how much you've put in over the years or how many years you've put into it. And how late you retire. The earlier you retire, the lower that monthly payment will be from the U.S. government. The later you retire, the more it'll be. But don't wait too long because the government is hoping you wait as long as possible so that you retire and then die soon after that so you don't get that much of a payment. So that's something to balance out. And we'll talk about in a future in a future video. Another thing that's important here is that not only do you put in 6.2% for this, your employer puts in another 6.2%. You don't see that in your paycheck. The employer pays that separately and it doesn't come out of your your pay. It's just essentially a cost that they incur for having employees. They have to pay an additional 6.2% to the government to cover your your social security. So that's another benefit, kind of a hidden benefit that you're getting from your employment and from your employer. The third kind of tax would be the Medicare tax. And Medicare is 1.45% of your pay will come out of your, again, your gross pay. And that money is going to be used for funding the national healthcare system called Medicare, which helps give older folks medical coverage and coverage for hospitalization and any kind of medical bills they, they might encounter while they're retired. Again, another good thing to have because before that, it was kind of a disaster when older folks retired, they didn't, no longer had an income and they got sick or they needed a hospitalization or what have you. And they just didn't have the money to cover a high cost of healthcare and ho- hospitalization. So Medicare covers that for those older folks. And again, in, in this scenario, another 1.45% comes from the employer directly to the government to cover Medicare. So there, so it's a kind of a 2X, but again, these these two here, are coming from the employer. There's other potential taxes that you might pay depending on your municipality. For example, in New York City, you have a you might have a city tax and you might even have a county tax that's that's put in there, but these three here are going to be the ones that are going to be pretty standard across the entire nation, but depending on where you live, you might have other taxes to pay or a state income tax is another another po- possibility. Okay. So that's the paycheck. Now, another thing I wanted to cover in, in this quick introduction is budgets. So let's look at that. So I'm going to bring up a simple budget that I created in a spreadsheet to walk through. You remember to work your budget based on your net pay. Net pay is going to be your, your salary minus all these deductions, minus all of those benefits that you're paying for, minus all of those taxes that you need to pay for. So in this budget that we're showing here, we're talking about a net pay of $3,333 per month. And again, I just chose these numbers kind of at random. It doesn't matter what they are. Just you work with your own own numbers, which is a simple way to show 
a budget and how you kind of set it up. There's other ways to set it up in a spreadsheet. You decide which way you want to do it. If you have other sources of income, of course, you would put them here in this column and list the numbers here and have them have them add up into a total income. And then you put in your expenses here in this column, you know, and I've chosen some examples, rent, $1,000, car, 270 gas, and utilities, food, entertainment, other, and so on and so forth. It's important to note that if you have expenses that happen less often than every month, you want to account for those. For example, if you pay $50 every three months for an oil change, then you want to add that in here. You want to say 50 divided by three oil change, put it in here so you account for it. And maybe you have other expenses that are annual divided by 12, put it in each month so that you're accounting for it and you're not missing out on those things. It's okay if you miss one or two over time, you'll, you'll be able to fill this out and have a good list of all your expenses. Now, the goal of this, of course, is that your expenses total should be less than your net pay in that month. If this number is higher, if your expenses is higher, then you got to figure out how to get that down. You got to figure out whether you should go out less often, whether you should maybe get a roommate and split rent rather than have the cost all to yourself, whether you should be living at home instead of living on your own, right? The end goal, of course, is so that the sum of your expenses is lower than your net pay. And hopefully the difference is enough that you can save at least 20%. And that's what, that's the goal that I was trying to get to here is you want to have the ability to save at least 20% of your pay every month so that you can save up for a rainy day. You can have, let's say, two or three months worth of expenses saved up so that if you lose a job or you want to transition to something else, you're not in an emergency situation. Again, this is called the rainy day fund, right? You want to be able to save up for that. And you can save up for that more quickly if you're saving 20% as a, rather than saving less than that. Eventually, on top of the rainy day fund, you want to be able to start saving for investing so that you can grow your money faster than you would if it weren't a standard banking account. And we'll talk about that investing and all of that in a future video. But I just want to plant that seed in your head, this one, this one, that you want to try to strive for saving at least 20%. If you can save more, great, but try to go for at least 20%. If your income is lower and your expenses are tight and you know there, there's, a tight, there's a tighter window between expenses and income and you can't shave off your expenses to the point where you're saving 20%, at least save 10% until you get to the point where you can save 20%. And maybe, you know, once you get a better job, you graduate from college, you got a degree, now you get a better job, or you get some raises, what have you, then get from 10 to 15 to 20% saving over time. That 20% is going to be really important for you to be able to get to the point where you can start investing and to get to the point where you can be financially independent earlier in life rather than later in life. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this is to provide that information to folks to be able to be sort of a master of your own domain, so to speak, earlier in life rather than later. The last thing I wanted to show is this, you can actually go on Google Sheets. If you go, you know, this is the old Google Docs, Google Sheets, and for free, get in there and everybody has access to this. If you have a Gmail account, for example, you can go to Google Docs or Google Sheets, it's called. It's, and it's just like their version of a spreadsheet. Right. And one of the first templates that you have access to in Google Sheets is this annual budget. So it, it's a lot more, you know, in depth than what I provided you with my simple one, but it's an interesting one to look at. So if you look at this annual budget thing, you can see that it gives you instructions on how to set it up, what's your balance and so on and so forth, and, and tabs for your expenses. And it allows you to break it out into different months. So it gives you more granularity and allows you to enter you know, all these different things on a per month basis to give you an easier way to track expenses and income too, right? All different kinds of incomes that you might have. Just to let you know that this is easy, it's free, it's available from Google Sheets and it's like in the first template that's out there. And it might be an easier way for you to get started on creating a budget and sticking to it. Anyway, that's what I wanted to cover in this first one. Hopefully you can stick with me on some of the other topics that are coming and thank you all for your attention. Have a great day.